Diario Yuso, uh, Diario Mi Hablo Español. So, uh, así que um, estoy mejorando. Uh, I don't know if my grammar is correct. Es mal, pero mi español, uh, porque necesito usar todo, todo el día, um, eh, es mejor, mejora, mejorando, mejorando, sí. Hola a todos, ¿cómo están? Soy Wes y he estado viviendo en Medellín por las últimas tres meses, los últimos tres meses. Y yo quería mostrarte mi progreso en esta lengua y tengo algunos consejos para ti a cómo aprender es español. A mí es importante que me ves hablar en español porque cada vez yo busqué videos a cómo aprender el español en tres meses, nunca las personas hablaron en español. Es difícil como contar uh, la cantidad um, de ap aprendieron español, ¿cierto? Pienso que es posible a aprender una lengua o cualquier habilidades si que quieres solo necesitas enfocar y concentrar y trabajar mucho 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 vamos pero cuando vivo Uh, yo vive con una familia de colombiano uh, todo el día uh, necesité necesité uh, hablar en español ah, uh -huh. hey, 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 hey. ¿Cuál, ¿cuál es tu nombre? Ale, Alejandro o sea, ¿puedes hablar en otras lenguas? Eh, o solo? yo parlo pequeño francés eh, parlo francés So there are four different parts to effectively learning a language. There's the listening, writing, speaking, and reading. In my opinion, I think all four are important and I'll go into each of them explaining why they're important. I believe this is the easiest to do because it requires the least amount of work, but simultaneously, I believe it has the smallest impact on your overall language learning experience. In my opinion, you have to mix all four together because just by listening, you don't get to think about the conjugation or the tenses, you're just absorbing the information. In order to really understand the language, you have to be speaking and so you have to be reading and writing it so you can think of the conjugations in your head. So when people are talking, try to actively pay attention to what they're saying. Listen to the words they're saying and even though you don't understand everything, see if you can process everything in your head because if you hear what they say and just kind of take a second and be like, okay, me dijiste, okay, she told me, but that's past tense, que, what? No, but that means that. It's gonna take a little bit of the process and obviously your brain can do this faster, but really stop and think about what's being said because you want to try to understand as much as possible. Sometimes we just try to look for context and this is okay. For example, people will talk to us and we only understand 50% of the words, but we'll assume what they're trying to say. And this works, but sometimes you'll look foolish when they ask you a question, expect an answer, and you just look at them and you do the, you do the nod, you know what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, see, 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 see. But you look foolish because they're expecting an answer from you, so they just look at you like, but I asked what kind of food you like. <laughs> Listening is really important because when you learn a new word, this is the first skill that gets utilized when you've learned that word because you're gonna start hearing it in people's conversations. When I was doing my research, people would say that watching TV shows on the language would help your learning. But in my opinion, honestly, that doesn't really do too much. And the reason for that is in the beginning, when you're watching a show and you don't know too much of the language, you're gonna be sitting there, you're gonna be listening, but you have no idea what's going on. You don't understand the conjugations. You don't understand most of the language. So in my opinion, at least for the first three months, it's really not a good use of your time. But it wasn't until like week five or six where I started understanding a good amount of the show. Like I could watch Friends in Spanish and understand the majority of it. Amigos. And now I can watch Spanish shows with Spanish subtitles and get the gist of it, but that's after the three months. So in the beginning, when I would do it, I would do it with English subtitles, and I don't think that's useful. I would do it with Spanish subtitles. I don't think that's useful either because you don't know anything about the language. I think shows are really important once you understand a bit of the language. I would honestly wait till about months two or three to really get into shows. 
Speaking is the most important, in my opinion, when learning a language, so I'm gonna spend the most time on it. There's no way around it. You have to just practice, 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 practice. For some of the other skills, you can get away with practicing at home, not having to deal with people, but the thing with speaking is you always have to practice. So my tips for in the beginning is really pay attention to the conjugations. And the reason for that is it's very easy to develop bad habits. This is something that I caught myself doing and I hear foreigners do all the time. You'll hear a word, but you won't conjugate it correctly. And if you don't spend that much time developing it, you'll develop bad habits and they become a lot harder to correct in the future. Something to pay attention to is the genders as well. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not 100% accurate on this. It's not impossible, but it's really hard to do it. I get it about 70, 75% of the time. Sometimes I'll say el calle instead of la calle or el lengua instead of la lengua. There's a lot of exceptions to the rule as well, so it gets a little confusing. But if you hear yourself make a mistake, be sure to correct it right away. Like I did in the beginning of the video, I heard my mistake in when I was talking about uh, months. I said las instead of los. So right after I corrected myself and I refilmed it because this is the only way to break the habit chain. Also pro tip when it comes to using the genders correctly, I think about it like a rhythm. So for example, comida propia, pero negro. So in my head, I still kind of have to think of what the correct gender of the adjective is going to be by me making that rhythm with comida propia, pero negro. Eventually it kind of trains your brain to do it. So I'll, I'll do it instinctively without even thinking about it sometimes. I still get it wrong, but like I said in the beginning, every time you get it wrong, correct yourself right away. Eventually, I believe you'll get it correct. I believe that speaking correctly is a lot more important than speaking with the correct accent. That's not to say accent isn't important, but for me personally, I spend about 85% of my energy making sure I conjugate things correctly. I'm using the right sentence structure and I spend the last 15% of my time trying to get the accent right. I do think the accent is really important though. You'll hear some people, foreigners, they'll talk and be like, hola, tengo que ir a la tienda. And it just sounds super, super gross. And if you check my earlier videos, I definitely have that accent. The more that you talk and the more that you develop it, you'll slowly develop the accent. So don't worry about it too much. So this happened to me a lot in the beginning because I focused on my accent a lot in the beginning. So I could say like two or three sentences really nicely. But then when locals would try to have a conversation with me, at that point, I couldn't talk anymore. Actually, when you said me amo Ace Brian, you don't need the Ace, just me amo Brian. Oh, you speak English. No, just that first speech and this one explaining it. You, you're kidding, right? Okay. And I think locals get a lot more impressed when you use correct Spanish than if you sound correct. People will talk to me and they hear me speak the Spanish and they ask me a question. And when I respond back correctly, they're like, Tu hablas español, o tu español es muy bien, muy bien. And when I tell them that I've only been studying for three months, they get even more impressed. And the reason for that is I really am a stickler for getting the language correct. And the way I learn anything is I think it's very important to understand fundamentals first. And once you understand fundamentals, it's a lot easier to create and to create sentences and to talk because you know how to build the sentences in your head. Quick tip, so most words in their conjugated form are gonna have the accent on the second to last syllable and verbs in their infinitive form are gonna have the accent in the last word. For example, comer, desarrollar, arreglar. This is to help you get a better idea of the rhythm of the language. Okay, so when it comes to tenses, I would highly recommend focusing on the present tense first. Like I said, you wanna understand that foundation before moving on to past tense. And in the beginning, if you're trying to get around it, I had a, a friend tell me that what he would do is he would say everything in present tense, like, yo como un sandwich ayer. And he would just say yesterday. So I eat a sandwich yesterday. And that's an easy way to get around it. Uh, but I think in, you should really understand present tense and how to conjugate those before moving on to past tense because those are gonna help you out. Once you understand present tense, then you can move on to past tense. There are three forms of past tense in Spanish. And to be completely honest, I don't think they're that hard. It's a little weird, but once you understand the concepts of them, I think they're actually easier than the conjugations themselves. So there's the indefinite past tense, which refers to a specific moment in time. There's the imperfect past tense, which refers to something that you're doing over a period of time. And then there's the continuous, past tense, which means that you've been doing it in the past and you're still doing it now. Hola, Gino. Say hi to my friends. Also, another tip is that there are some words where certain forms of the past tense are used more frequently. For example, sabia, like I knew, 
I knew that. Or like uh, tenia, for example, tenia 20 años. When I had, you know, shut. When I had 20 years, or like when I was 20 years old, right? For some common ones like estar, estuve, y estaba, they're actually used about the same amount of times. I find myself talking and run on sentences a lot. Gino, oh my god. I actually think that's okay because the natural flow of conversation is fluid like that. So, in the beginning, just start with saying as many phrases as you can and then slowly make your way into complete phrases and then slowly make your way into complete sentences. I wouldn't focus too much on like, okay, here's where the period, here's where my sentence ends. Just try to make sure you're saying things the correct way in terms of conjugation intent. Something about speaking, uh, you don't want to translate directly in your head. However, you kind of want to get the idea of what you want to say in your head and then try to figure out a way to say it correctly in Spanish. So what I do is that if I know I'm gonna have a conversation in the future, like I'm gonna ask someone how their day is, what they're doing, what they're cooking, I'll think about that in my head and I'll start preparing the sentence in my head before I actually talk to them. It helps get the initial fear out of the way because I find that once I'm in the flow of conversation and it becomes more fluid, it's a lot easier to conjugate correctly and just kind of have a fluent conversation. And similarly, you're gonna hear subjunctives a lot. So I would try to understand at least what the concept of a subjunctive is and what the rule is and how they change the letter and the conjugations. I don't understand the concept completely, so I can't talk about it yet. But when I hear it, I understand what it means. So if you hear gomas instead of gomes, or if you hear estes instead of estas, the word is still the same, but it's in a subjunctive mood. And that's something that I think you're gonna learn with time. It's hard to explain it because they don't have this concept in English, so I'm still trying to figure it out myself. I would highly recommend looking up a, a list of irregular subjunctive verbs because they're actually used quite frequently, like osea or like vaya or tendra. Those are really important. Right, Gino? El tercero piso es liendo. Opino que liendo es el más importante habilidad de aprender más palabras. Y es un poco fácil porque tú vas a aprender poco un poco porque las letras son lo mismo de inglés. Es importante que tú aprendes los sonidos de letras porque en español es más fácil porque nunca cambian. Los sonidos siempre son lo mismo. También opino que cuando tú aprendes una palabra nueva, tú necesitas ver y escribir porque es la manera correcta aprender bien en tu cabeza. Cuando tú lees con tu voz, es muy importante porque tú puedes practicar tu pronunciación y tú puedes conocer las palabras en las formas conjugadas. Siempre cuando tú practicas, poco un poco tú vas a mejorar. Cuando leo un periódico o un, uh, un artículo, es más fácil para mí a leer las palabras. Poco un poco va a ser más fácil. A mí me gusta leer antes de dormir porque es mejor para mí a recordar las palabras. Tú necesitas dormir a aprender más palabras. Y últimamente, cambiar tu celular a español. Es una buena manera a aprender las fechas, las palabras por aplicaciones y más cosas también. Let's talk about writing. Writing is the easiest to learn, but it's the least important when it comes to terms of everyday use. But I really feel like this helps progress your Spanish so much because it's essentially like a slower version of speaking. You can think of the correct conjugation and the right tense with all the time in the world. And if you ever get stuck, you can look up what you want to write and write it down. And it's good because when you look up the word, you say it out loud and then you write it and that just helps with your memory as well. I really believe writing things down help things stick in your brain. Really pay attention to the accent marks and the tildes. For example, when you're doing past tense for verbs, the last vowel or the last syllable for those verbs are gonna have a tilde because it's in past tense. So that's how you can tell the difference between compro, like I buy right now, or el compro, right? He bought. I buy, yo compro, he bought, el compro. I do recommend journaling in Spanish when you can because I like to journal personally and I don't journal every day. I think that's a little excessive. I think journaling just overall is really good for mental health and it helps organize your thoughts. Also, I like to journal because when I have a lot of ideas in my head, I just need to get them out and it helps me realize if I'm being an idiot or if I'm not. So, okay. so here are some journal entries from March 9th and you can see that I started out in English, but eventually English, I transformed into Spanish because I felt like it and I ended up writing this whole entire page 
in Spanish. And in the future, it kind of comes and goes. So, for example, look, 3 18 20, I wrote in English right here. March 28th, I ended up writing in Spanish. So when I'm brainstorming ideas, I write in English, but when I'm telling stories, I like to switch back and forth between Spanish and English. I think it's a very important skill to have. I also use my notebook to write down new words that I'm learning and their definitions, and I'll say them out loud, and then I'll go over them before I go to bed. Last pro tip, Tinder's helped me a lot with writing Spanish too. I'll link the video to that right here. Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Ah, sí, sí. Yo, yo compré con, uh, con Luna. Eh, ¿Martis? Uh, ¿Martis? ¿Miracles? Yo estudié en dos escuelas de español por tres semanas en total. Uh, pero ahora tengo trabajo en una escuela de inglés. Um, ¿Es mejor? Or it's, it's muy bien. Let's go over some tips and tricks. Number one, and I think this, if you can do this, this is the single best thing that you can do to improve your Spanish, is to live with locals. I don't think it's enough just to live in a foreign country. I have some friends who have lived here in Colombia for three months, five months, six months, but they're living with other Americans or other foreigners and they only really get to practice their Spanish when they're talking to the person in the front desk for five minutes. So what I did was my first week here, I stayed with a Colombian family while I was taking lessons to force me to get over that initial hump of speaking. You're gonna struggle a lot, you're gonna sound really dumb, but that's just a part of the process. I think this is the single greatest thing that you can do to help you learn the language. Because now that I'm living with locals, every single day, I can't avoid it. Even on the days that I, I've worked all day and I don't wanna do anything, they still ask me how I'm feeling, they still ask me what I'm doing, and it still forces me to converse at least a little bit in Spanish. And I think that consistency is one of the biggest issues of most people when they're learning a language. When you're living with locals, this kind of solves that because you have no choice but to interact with your housemates. And it helps me a lot because now during quarantine, we're all in the house together. So if I want to hang out with them or if we're cooking, there's usually multiple people in the kitchen. We're forced to talk to each other and I'm forced to use the language all the time. I do understand that this is not possible for everybody, but I really feel like this is the single greatest thing that you can do if you want to learn a Spanish quickly. The second tip that I have is that if you can, try to teach English because holy crap, this thing did so much for me. For the last two months, I've been teaching English at the school and I teach anywhere from level three to level one. And level one is where the people don't really speak that much English. Most of the lesson is in Spanish. And I'm not gonna lie, in the beginning, it was really hard. Now, after being here for three months and after teaching for two, I can go over the, the level one classes with no problem. Because for two to four hours every single weekday, I'm constantly transitioning back and forth from English to Spanish. And because of that, I have to understand English concepts and then explain them in Spanish and vice versa. And it really helped me get a really good understanding of the language and how some things directly translate, how some things don't directly translate. My students teach me things all the time. So I'm really thankful for my school. It's called Ulsa Academy. It's a conversation-based academy. So all of the lessons are based on conversations instead of learning the rules of grammar. And this was perfect for me because I went to Spanish school and I learned some of the rules and I think you can learn the rules on your own. But just like most things in life, the only way you can really learn is just by doing it. As I'm teaching English conversation to my students, they're teaching me how to say it in Spanish, which is helping me with my conversation skills too. So it essentially kill two birds with one stone. Number three, go to Spanish school. If you can afford it, it's a little expensive in here in Colombia as well, but I highly recommend it. I ended up going to two schools. So I picked one school, which was the number one rated school. And it was about $150 for the first week four hours every day for a week. That was really good for me because it helped me get a good foundation for the language. It helped me understand some of the basic rules. For example, AR is in its group and IR and ER are in their own group. It helped me understand a little bit of the past tense. It helped me understand some directions and some of the sentence structures. So going to Spanish school is really important, especially in the beginning because I'm a piano teacher as well. And I think for anything you're trying to learn, in the beginning, you don't know what you don't know. So you need somebody who is a native speaker or a professional of some sort to help guide you. And then once you get good foundation or fundamentals, then you can try to learn the language on your own. So this happened to me personally in the beginning when I tried to self-teach myself Spanish. Full disclaimer, I've been kind of studying Spanish by myself for the last maybe a year on and off. 
but I only probably knew about 40 words. So I couldn't speak, I couldn't understand and what you've seen in the video. I wasn't completely starting from zero. However, I learned more in one week of being here in Colombia than I did in my year learning by myself. So take that for what you will. Pro tip for this is that take a break in between your classes. So go to classes for one week and then take a break and then go to classes again. Classes are very mentally draining. It's very hard to go to class, learn for four hours straight, and then have the motivation to go and try to talk to people. That's why what I did is I set myself up so that I was living with the Colombian family. So when I went home, I had to speak Spanish, but a lot of people that I met after going to Spanish school, they would just go back to their hostel and then they would go and speak with their friends in English. I don't think this is effective because after two days, I surpassed all of my peers in my class because when I was at home, the family was forcing me to use it. So I was applying what I was learning while I was doing it. Because it's so mentally taxing, you need a week to try to apply what you've learned. I think this is the best way to learn anything. You learn a little bit or you learn something and then you apply it so you understand it better and then you move on. So what I did is I went to school for a week, I took a break and then after I went to a different school closer to my house. When I tested again, they actually bumped me up four weeks. So I skipped four weeks worth of classes just by practicing on my own. I saved all that money and I saved all that time. So I think when it comes down to it, language learning is really about how how much you want it and how much time you put into it i've put in every day at least two hours but some days as much as 12 13 hours just talking and having full conversations with my roommates and i think it's really possible to to be fluent in three months is it hard absolutely do i think everybody can do this no not because of skill but because of the amount of dedication and time it takes i was learning the language while working and doing my youtube channel and trying to fix my life and doing all these other things so it does get really overwhelming but my personality is when i find something that i want to learn i get obsessed and i just go for it i just wanted to show that it was possible tip number four try to make friends with spanish locals i think this is a really good way to learn. I met my friend Daniel through a language exchange and I think that's a good place to meet locals. And he introduced me to his friends who ended up becoming my friends. And now when we go out together, they take care of me and I'm kind of the American guy in the group. It gives you, I guess, like street cred because when you're walking around with a bunch of foreigners, you know, people treat you a certain way. But then when you're walking around with locals, one, they can show you local parts of the country where a lot of tourists don't go, which is what I wanted. But two, you'll find that people actually tend to treat you differently once they know that other Colombians have accepted you. And the reason for that is because Colombia is an amazing country, but it does have a history of drugs and prostitution, which you're trying to get rid of. The country has so much more than that. But a lot of people come here looking for that. And if you go to Poblado or the touristy areas, they have tons of that. And I don't think that's what Colombia is. So if you really want to see the country and all the beauty and meet all the really good people that you can, you have to make friends with some locals. Number five, this one is extremely, extremely important. I cannot stress this enough. Really try to understand the rules of Spanish. This applies to conjugations, tenses, different word forms, and sentence structure. All the conjugations can seem very daunting if you don't know where to start, which is why I really push for understanding of why certain conjugations are the way they are. Of course, in present tense, there are a ton of irregulars and that's a separate story, but for the most part, 90% of the verbs are going to follow these rules. I think this is really important because when you're trying to create sentences for yourself, the best way to create is if you understand the rules. If you just associate the words, but you don't know the rules behind it, you're gonna have a lot harder of a time because then you're just memorizing words. And the thing with Spanish is all the conjugations are freaking annoying so every word has like 25 30 different forms in just one tense and there's different moods and everything that's why it's so important to understand the rules behind the language number six is i would recommend reading a list of the most common and regular verbs you're going to see the most irregular verbs in the present tense there are certain irregular verb rules as well i'm not going to sit here and teach it because there's other people that can teach it a lot better than me and unfortunately this is the only part of the language where you have to memorize sometimes they have rules but a lot of the irregulars don't have rules and they are just the way they are. But because they're used so common, it's really important to learn these. Lastly, try to simplify your learning. So the thing with Spanish is they have six or seven different words talking about the same thing. And I think it's important to know these words when you're listening, but when you're trying to talk and trying to speak, I think it's best just to simplify it. For example, hermosa, linda, guapa, bonita. They all really mean the same thing. So pick one for your vocabulary. So you use that one when you talk 
and then over time you'll hear the other ones and then you'll understand that and you can use those in your vocabulary. For me, when I say pretty, I usually just say bonita. I think it's more important to try to say as many things as possible about different topics rather than focusing on knowing seven different words for the word beautiful. Normalmente me, 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 me levanto a, a más o menos a las 11 en la mañana y después voy a um, cocinar desayuno para mí. Hola parceros, ¿cómo están? Soy Wes y bienvenidos a mi canal. He estado aprendiendo español por más o menos dos meses y media y quiero mostrarte cómo aprendí español en ese tiempo. ¿Listo? ¡Vamos! So lastly, I'm going to talk about my struggles. Number one, the biggest thing, vocabulary. It's just impossible to learn all the words in a language in three months. I would love to see if somebody else could do it, but for me personally, through my experience, there's just no way. Even if you were studying 50 words a day, if you don't use them, you're gonna forget 90% of them. For me, I learned about three or four different words a day, and I try to find a way to implement them into my everyday language. But vocabulary, I think is just the one skill that you can't cheat. This is the only skill that I think takes a lot of time to develop, so there's no way around it. Number two, future tense. So this is not really a struggle, but more like it's not super important in terms of value. I put a lot of effort into studying vocabulary, into learning my conjugations from present and the past, but for the future tense, I usually just use ir and then whatever the verb is. It's in my opinion, not worth the time putting into that, at least at this point in your career. And I think for the amount of time that it takes to really learn it and to understand it versus the value in everyday life, it's just not equitable. I'm going to learn that in the future, obviously, because I want to fully understand the language. But at least right now, I haven't really found too much use for it. The most common one that I've heard is like, I will do it, which is lo are. I also hear tendras también. But other than that, it's very uncommon. So. I just didn't put too much effort into it. Subjunctives. Oh my God, subjunctive verbs are such a bitch. We don't have this mood in English, so it's very hard to kind of understand it. I would say now I understand it about 50% and I use it when I talk, but I have to think about it and I'm about 50% accurate. Subjunctive is used way too much for how complicated it is. So this is something that I've been focusing on for a while and I think that you guys should focus on or at least read up a little bit about it so you'll understand what it is, but I'm not gonna lie, subjunctive has given me a lot of trouble. Fourth is understanding accents. So this is the thing that happens when you're learning a language. You talk to a couple of people and you can understand everything and you're like super excited, you're super hyped. And you go on the street, you try to talk to somebody and you understand nothing of what they say. And it's super common when I meet people from the coast, some Venezuelans, when they talk, it's very hard to understand them because of how fast they talk. For example, some Venezuelans that I live with, when they say, no lo conozco, Colombians would say, uh, no lo conozco. But then the Venezuelans would say, no lo conozco. They'll cut off the Z. So unless you know what word that is, you don't really know what they're saying. It's easy to confuse that. There are like a million different accents because everybody speaks the language differently. And I think this is why it's important to really understand the words and the fundamentals and the conjugations. While doing that, you'll understand certain phrases that go together frequently. So even though if you don't hear the real word being said correctly, you can kind of infer or guess based on context what it means. Lastly is consistency. I am crazy when it comes to learning a new skill. When I'm obsessed about something, I do it every single day constantly and I'm super disciplined about it and I just learn, learn, learn. However, that being said, I do feel like it's very difficult trying to balance life and trying to survive with finding a job, cooking, doing whatever you gotta do on top of learning Spanish. I personally wish I could just focus on learning Spanish for three months and I think I would have been a lot better than I am right now. But it's very common sometimes where I'll be working on something the whole entire day and I just don't have the motivation to do any Spanish whatsoever. And I think that's okay. And that's common, you know, we're all human. So I think it is possible to be fluent in a language in three months, and especially Spanish because it's so close to English. And my term of fluency is being able to have most conversations with them understanding you and you understanding them and really being able to go back and forth. So I've been able to have conversations with my roommates for hours at the time and I understand 90% of what they're saying and they can understand what I'm saying and that to me is fluency Mastery on the other hand, I think is gonna take a lot longer and that's my goal because I want to master this language when I learn a skill I want to go hit it hard and I want to be able to be a full master of it that realistically will probably take in the shortest eight months 
but realistically probably a year and i think that's okay because for most people they don't want to master a language they just want to be able to be fluent and i think fluency is definitely achievable in three months and i was able to do it while working on other things as well so it depends on your motivation your consistency and discipline but it's a hundred percent possible <laughs> Have hiccups if there's one thing i can leave you with is that try to set up your life in a way where you can learn Spanish while doing the things you need to do to survive. I got a job teaching English, so while I'm working and getting paid, I'm also learning the language. If you set up your life in a way where you're constantly using Spanish while doing other things, it becomes less of a burden. Like when I was in the United States and I tried to learn the language, I felt like it was almost impossible because I had nobody to practice with. It was just too easy for me to not speak the language, just go back and do everything in English after my Spanish lesson. So after setting my life up in a way where I had to be speaking the language no matter what I was doing, it really helped me progress. And if progression is your goal, then you have to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation because that's the only way you're gonna see results quickly. Gracias todos por ver mi video. Yo produzco toda la música por mis videos. Si tú quieres escuchar mi música, tú puedes seguirme aquí. Si tú quieres seguirme en Instagram, tú puedes seguirme aquí. Espero que tú tengas un buen día. Gracias por todos. Chao.